Greet to everyone with great love in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to preach the Word of God first today. But before I do this, I'd like to share some information with you, because currently this is the main uh, mode of communication between the leadership of the church and between believers. We have online church services, and this is where I'd like to say that for a temporary uh, period, uh, the leadership of the church in uh, uh, in Hungary and uh, together with the medical advisors we have decided to postpone the opening of the services um, and uh, not hold uh, uh, physical church meetings. This has already been so in Budapest, but this applies to all the country churches as well. So you will be able to follow the services online on hit.hu and also through hit radio and other online channels. Uh, you can listen to the services and in the country churches where in the past month there were um, physical church services uh, for the time being this these will all be cancelled and uh, they will only be held online and this uh, limitation applies to church services and prayer meetings and um, any program where people gather in a physical way, uh, this applies to all these. So please make sure you ask all the organizers. And for example, all the summer camps will be uh, canceled as well. But at the same time, we began a uh, prayer and uh, fasting chain until the end of September. And you can uh, register online and you can uh, pray uh, several hours during a day. And you can fast on certain days, which you um, register in advance and ima.hit.hu is where you can uh, register for the prayer. There are publications of the church from Monday to Friday. Uh, and there is uh, an outdoor uh, bookshelf where you can purchase them during um, business hours during the weekdays in Hit Park, Budapest. And it is mandatory to wear a mask, whoever steps onto the premises in Hit Park, just like in any store or just like in any public transport facility in the country. Those who would like to buy um, the publications online, then you can buy it on patmos.hu or ionkiado.hu. Um, this latter one, Ion Kiado Publishing House, um, is mostly publishes book for children and youth. St. Paul Academy also announced um, its um, application for the school year, the five-year uh, school year. August 24th, Monday, is the deadline on the website of uh, St. Paul Academy, scpa.hu. And you can also receive further information about the courses. And, um, you can also ask believers around you who have already um, completed the, the, the program or who are currently enrolled and get information about how to apply. And those who would like to use our counseling services and speak to pastors, um, and they can do it in the afternoons and weekdays from 2 to 5 p.m. And you can see the phone numbers on the screen or Skype address. Um, where this is possible. Uh, there is special counseling in, um, for uh, married uh, couples or uh, couples counseling. 
counseling or other uh, personal or family crisis, crisis situations. And there's also an email address, tanácsadó at hit.uhu. And feel free to get in touch with us on these phone numbers or email address and uh, we'll be able to provide assistance in situations of crisis and hard times that individuals, couples or families may go through. At this time, we have um, pastors on the other end of the line and um, professional counselors. And regarding general questions, and uh, charity. This is also during weekdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. can be called the number that you see on the screen. Bible speaks about donations, about giving and support of the church. It's uh, important that you also support the work of uh, the church and we would like to serve the people of God with even more ministries and uh, we have some building projects that are ongoing which are requesting your assistance uh, you can wire money over to uh, our bank account numbers, which you can find on our website. And those who would like to support us in cash, that can be done in Budapest at Hit Park at the dispatcher, dispatcher from 6 in the morning till 10 p.m. If you put the amount in an envelope, then please write on the envelope whether it is uh, tithes or whether it is um, a donation. The Bible speaks about these two different types of uh, support with which we can minister to the local church. And in the local churches in the country, this is also organized how uh, you can place the donations at, uh, at the physical office of the church or um, wire bank transfer bank accounts. I'd like to call your attention to one publication, especially that is uh, the latest issue of HETEC, the news magazine. This is a news uh, magazine that can be purchased here in Hit Park or the local church buildings or this can be bought at the news stands or larger um, um, shopping centers and gas stations throughout the country. There are many interesting writings in this issue. I think I've read all of them. It's very exciting. Different internet uh, data collection, information collection is connected to biblical prophecies, the, the different applications are gathering information about people and what kind of control they can exercise over those who provide this data. And we have several articles about the situation in America. There will be elections in the fall. And as you can see on the front page of the paper, America has changed much in the last few months, last seven months. No one would have thought that these changes uh, would come to pass. There are three other articles. One is about coronavirus, new information. One is an interview with uh, Professor Bela Merkeli of uh, Semmelweis University, the dean, the rector of Semmelweis University. And, uh, 
Many people's lives are in his hands because the, that is the place where um, most of the doctors are trained and hungry. And um, it's a very uh, interesting opinion about what to expect regarding the virus. And there's another article by the um, um, head of the ambulance organization in Hungary. And a third writing, Dr. Andras Lukács writes about generally the epidemic and the vaccine, what to expect. This is a good uh, assessment of uh, what to expect. So he's a practicing um, a professional, medical professional and professor, and uh, he didn't just uh, gather information from Facebook, but um, the, regarding the vaccine, all the work that is being done in different uh, professional centers throughout the world, in America and Russia and different countries, in Europe, and uh, hopefully uh, after such a found. It's important that God anoint the doctors and the professionals, that there may be clarity, and uh, people. It's worth um, all three articles, um, it, it is professionals who speak about the importance of hygiene, of washing hands, of uh, wearing a mask, and um, social distancing, because uh, if you look at social media, there's so much so different people are speaking, uh, giving different uh, their opinions, uh, who may not necessarily be um, be the right uh, people coming from the right uh, people who don't have the professional expertise or knowledge they give their opinions about these uh, important things of uh, health care and uh, epidemics because we see that there's a lot of uh, uh, this and a lot of uh, debate even on the, the Facebook uh, accounts of the church. So we encourage you to listen to those who are uh, professionals who have experience in this domain. I thank you for your understanding, for your cooperation in all these things, for your support during these hard times that you're giving to the church. And now I'd like to pray, and after prayer, we will deal with the Word of God. My Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, we thank you for your grace. We thank you that we are alive, and we thank you that we were born again because of your goodness. And uh, because of your goodness, we're able to live today. You're the one who gives us life. You're the one who gives us everything. And it's not from us, it's from your grace. And we ask you, Lord, to keep us and keep all the uh, viewers of um, this program now who cannot be here in this place uh, and we cannot celebrate together with our brothers and sisters in this assembly hall and we pray for them that they may be covered with the blood of Jesus and we especially pray for those who, whose health has been attacked by the devil and we pray for the brothers and sisters who have fallen sick because of the virus and we also pray for every other person who has been attacked by the virus. We ask you, our God, to bless the 
them and touch them with your healing power. And Lord, grant that they may be healed and they may be delivered from this disease, from pain, from all the, uh, the, the symptoms may disappear from their bodies and all the complications and uh, 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 they may be free of. And we pray for our brothers and sisters whose financial life has been um, shattered by this uh, virus. And we also pray for those who lost their jobs. I ask you to give them a better job, a better workplace than what they've lost. And we pray for the entrepreneurs who have come into difficulties. You are the savior. I ask you to come stretch out your arm and save them and pour out your blessing on them. And we also pray, Lord, that you may grant that during these days we may all be edified and grow and develop because you said that everything works out for the good of those who love you. And Lord, grant that all of us, we may be renewed in loving you and that this time may be um, a time where we can co go closer to you and come out stronger from this time of crisis. Lord, I ask you to anoint your people during this time and grant that the people who love their God may take courage and act and that all of us may stand in the gap and uh, hear your word and act on your uh, commands in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to start with a very important scripture tonight from Matthew 28, the end of Matthew, where I'd like you to open your Bibles. I think this is a key scripture, and um, if the Lord grants, I hope that I can continue to speak a lot about this among the people of God, because this, in essence, the last three uh, verses of uh, the Gospel of Matthew is the great commission to which God has called us to. This is the commandment about which God has um, called all of us Christians. And before I read the scripture, I'd like to say that we see in the Bible that everything has been created because of the will of God and all of us were created to do the will of God. And Jesus Christ, in the last verses of the Gospel of Matthew, sends his disciples, he sends those who belong to him, that they may act the following thing. So let me read. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, oh, I am with you, always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I'd li uh, like to start at the end. Jesus promised that, behold, I will be with you all the time, every day until the end of this age, this uh, world era. This is a promise. Jesus says that I, he will be with us every day. I believe that when he says every day, means every day. Also, the 8th of August, 2020, Jesus promised that I will be with you every day until the end of the age. This is a wonderful promise, my friends. This is a wonderful pro hope and a wonderful support for all of us that we are not left to ourselves in this world. Jesus promised that he will be with us until the end of the, of the end of the world. And we see that the world has not yet ended. There have been tremendous changes in the past months in this world, but the the end of this um, era has not yet happened, it's not yet uh, been uh, concluded. And if you leave your bookmark here, and for a second uh, turn the pages in, in your Bible to the beginning, 
of the Gospel of Matthew. And then you see that there is this angelic promise concerning Jesus in Matthew 1, 23, that behold, the angel says to Joseph when Jesus was already conceived in the womb of Mary, the angel conveyed this message to Joseph saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel annual which is translated God with us. Amen. So the coming of Jesus to earth contained the good news to mankind that God is willing to work together, cooperate with humankind. He's willing to help us. So let's go back to the end of the Gospel of Matthew. And it's important to remember that this is how the this is how the Gospel of Matthew starts, and it ends with this promise of Jesus. So the beginning was that the angel reveals to Joseph that the son will be born, whose name will be Emmanuel. This is one of the names of the Messiah, and it means, as he translates it in Hungarian translation, the word Hebrew, Emmanuel, word, that God is with us, that God is with us. And this is what Jesus Christ promises, that he, I will be with you. And the question is, who is you when he says, I'll be with you? Who is he with? Some people interpret this saying that it applies to all of mankind, that any time you can do anything, God is with us and he will help us. And there are people who pray like this, to God, saying you should help them uh, during the, at the universities, during the exam period, people pray more than they usually do during the year. People who never pay attention to God, but before a difficult exam, they start praying. Or they put money in a, uh, the, the basket in a church. Some people pray before a job interview, but never before or never after. And they always say, God, help me. Help me, help me. But I'd like you to understand that when he says, I'll be with you, this doesn't apply to all men. And in these three verses that I read, it's very clear that this promise that I am with you every day until the end of the world, the addressees of this promise are those who do what Jesus said just beforehand, because this promise that I will be with you every day is connected with the word and. And let's look at what he said before that. There's a commandment. He commanded them. The commandment is wonderful because it begins immediately with a, a revelation, confirmation that all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. So it makes it clear the position out of which he speaks, position of power. And of this position of authority, he gives a commandment to those, instructions to those who would like Jesus to be with them every day until the end of the age. And being with them is a key uh, expression here because it's a real experience. And we'll come back to this. So the Word of God says that he will be with those every day until the end of the world who go and make the, the people's um, disciples, make disciples of all nations. This is the most important task of Christians. We can experience in this world that, that the world, outside world, considers Christianity, and, and by world I mean those who don't have a religion or people who belong to other religions, they tolerate 
Christianity much more if Christianity doesn't try to proselytize, doesn't try to convince others to uh, join the church. We have also been ac uh, accused of aggressively converting people. Um, there's been an article recently in Hetek about uh, Christianity in Iran, of which we can see that there is a, a, a revival in Iran, according to the information of this article, that many people are coming to turning to Jesus Christ, especially in Pentecostal charismatic communities, because believers fulfill this, pro this um, commandment. And this is why they're being persecuted. This is very clear in the article as well, that even in countries where people allow communities to be Christians, they always have the condition that they cannot involve others, they cannot convert others to Christianity, which is uh, punished by death in many Muslim countries. Someone converts a Muslim to become a Christian. It's the same in communist China and in, in other countries as well. But until you are not converting, until you're not aggressive, uh, there is peace around you. And the conflict start when you, when you start to convert aggressively. But I'd like you to understand that preaching the gospel and um, making people to opposing a, a decision before people and making it clear that they need to make a decision. This is something that is a commandment from Christ to the church. It, Jesus didn't say that he should uh, give birth to many children and that's how you should uh, multiply. That's what God said in the book of, of Genesis. So that's, a, that's also a commandment of God, but that's not what Jesus is talking about here. And this is not how you should grow the numbers of the church. But what Jesus said here, the, the key and the, the main method of growth in the church is not natural multiplication, natural growth, but going and making disciples of every nation, of all nations. So preach the gospel. The Bible doesn't contain that, that not Joseph evangelist shall go, or Tod Geza evangelist shall go, or Pajor Tomash evangelist shall go, will make people disciples, and you should just watch as they uh, witness, but he calls everyone uh, without exception, all who are disciples of Jesus and who want Jesus to be with you, because Geza, Tomash, and Yuri, they do it, and God blesses them, and he's with him, with, with them, but God wants to be with you as well, and he also wants to act in your life. But the condition of this is for you to preach the gospel. I saw people reacting in the Facebook page of the church uh, because we announced that we're not going to have the services. Someone wrote that this is a difficult time because there are brothers and sisters who don't have an internet connection. Well, if you know anyone who doesn't have an internet connection, then please help them. Don't write to us that there is someone who doesn't have, uh, who cannot uh, be in touch with Christianity because they don't have an internet connection. If you know people who know someone who belong to the church, but for example, they cannot uh, have uh, internet connection, then you have a task in this area. You can visit that them if uh, or you can call them uh, maybe you can record uh, onto something a CD uh, the teaching and then send it to them or, or give it to them maybe they don't have a CD player then someone can maybe you can some of you can you can you can buy a CD player to them it's not such a big uh, financial investment maybe you could uh, take notes and send them the notes and writing in a, in a form of a letter or take it to them so you should feed those who need food spiritual food so, just in the same way, that in the natural level, you have a brother or sister who's hungry because they lost their job and they don't have money for uh, their everyday needs. But according to the Bible, it's your task to help them. 
to support them and it's also uh, to buy them food and to support them that they may not die of hunger and uh, several people should get together and uh, contribute uh, we have a charity as well but the church this is not the primary task of the church to give this uh, natural help this is also a task but it's not the primary task but the primary task is to feed those who are hungry for the word it's written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god and for months now we're in a situation where certain responsibility concerning uh, life in the church uh, is, uh, is not anymore on the, on the large uh, church uh, leadership because we can't hold these services uh, in a physical way. Now, this task of making disciples of people is also on your shoulders. That in your environment, you should preach the gospel, speak to people about the miracles that God has performed in your own life, and feed people with the word of God. Encourage people. Look around. Look at your um, phone um, and all the contacts in your phone. And all, look at all, all the Christians you haven't heard about for a long time. Call them. Don't use Facebook just to uh, inform or, or just to uh, write uh, uh, about your opinion regarding the pandemic, but communicate with brothers and sisters who you haven't seen for a long time. Ask them if they need anything. Maybe uh, there, there's so many channels and I'm not, uh, you know, it's Messenger, Skype, whatever. You can, you can communicate with people free of charge so you don't even need to spend money speaking to people to preach the gospel to people, that people may be helped uh, to be made disciples. And on this Facebook page, the, the comment writer said that people will go away and they will be lost in the world. Well, they won't if you go and uh, reach out to them and help them. So don't wait for others to do this job and instruct others to do them, but you do it yourself. And, uh, step, take uh, a step uh, out of your way to help them. The Bible teaches us that we are responsible for each other in this way. And in Proverbs, there is a scripture that says that if you see that someone is uh, going towards death and they're, you're not helping them, it's your responsibility. So if you see someone who's going the wrong way, wrong direction, and who are going further away from a personal relationship with God, then... Uh, you should see that it's their uh, eternal life that's dependent on this, then don't wait for a church, the church to have services for them to come back because God, because the devil can take them away in the same, at the same time. But you should take the responsibility to reach out to them and take, Jesus said to you as well, you go. He didn't say you go to church, but he says go, go and make disciples of all peoples. It's very important to have the church services here. Don't don't misunderstand me here. I'm not speaking against the church services when I say that in an individual way you should also serve and, and try to help people save lives. You see, you know, though we, these people are celebrated who save others, other people's lives, and this is a great thing, and may God bless everyone, especially those who work for the ambulance. Uh, the, this article in Hetek is very inspiring, uh, and his mission is very inspiring. May God bless him, because all a saved life is a chance to have eternal life lives so it's a good chance for them but the bible says that don't be afraid of those who can kill uh, the body but be fear of him who can put someone to eternal condemnation so saving uh, eternal life is very important and the chance is depends on you personally it depends on you uh, whether your relative or your neighbor uh, whoever is called by god would receive 
the message? Do you give him or her the message? It's a tremendous importance on all uh, Christians. Uh, the invitation of some people for eternal life is with you, uh, uh, for such people who cannot be uh, connected by, by Shandone Met or Gezatot or I cannot be in contact with him, but uh, uh, you are heard by him, by them, you, you are let inside uh, their homes, it's your responsibility to give this invitation to them. This is a great burden on someone. If you have a, an invitation card in your bag, and as a result, uh, someone can take uh, his reward, 100 million currents, and you go there, you speak about uh, football or summer holidays, and you go home, and two weeks later, you just remember that uh, this invitation was in my bag, and I didn't give him over, and, and th this has expired already. So this is a, a great uh, responsibility on a natural level uh, but uh, the gift that you have is more worth more than 100 million foreigns it's salvation and eternal life and Jesus says that if you do that then God will be, be with you every day how many of you want that Jesus Christ uh, would be there with you I can see that many of you uh, some people want Jesus to be with them, and he promised that he, he, will, he would be with you. He promised that. But its condition it's, is that we make disciples of all the nations, we would baptize people. I know that this is a little bit complicated right now um, to organize uh, how to baptize certain people who recently uh, repented, but don't be in despair. And I would like to encourage you, the local churches as well, to seek uh, the solutions. There are uh, suggestions of uh, the uh, medical team. We can get back to the times of Buddha where uh, people were uh, 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 baptizing bathtubs. Uh, uh, maybe you and I have been baptizing a bathtub. Uh, so people can be baptized and of course it should be done by ministers but um, of course if there is a believer who is in contact with uh, such people who are in life danger uh, you can you can baptize uh, them uh, the bible says that uh, the bible says that god has given ministry gifts there are evangelists who have a separate uh, ministry gifts for that there are teachers who have gifts uh, for them for that but here Jesus uh, addresses not the ministry gifts this message is not for the evangelists not only uh, the teachers but for every Christian we shouldn't um, be more we should be wiser than God uh, you should only um, speak about what you know in the Bible and in order that Jesus be with us uh, it's very important to know the truth and to, to observe that let's get back to the book of Judges and uh, the sixth chapter uh, we can read it in verse 12 uh, um, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. So if the Lord is with us, it's an abstract reality. We can... Uh, we can be sure about that because there are uh, testimonies uh, that happen with us but in uh, the book of uh, judges it's included why it happened that uh, the israelites were in the hands of the midian midianites verse one in chapter six stars that the israelites did evil in the eyes of the lord and this is why the lord had given into the hands of the uh, midianites so if someone is not in uh, 
does not testify, if uh, someone has, does not have a victorious life, then we have to get back to the commandments of Jesus. Uh, and the question is, do you do what Jesus sa said? And let's turn to another part of scripture now, because also in this scripture, Jesus says that he is with us. And not Jesus only He, the Son, but also the Father and the Holy Spirit uh, are also with, with you. I could speak about that in pitch uh, recently, and it inspired me very much how, it's, how important is it that God would be with us. And love is very important in that, and obedience is very important. Uh, if you turn to John chapter 14, in verse 29, Jesus says to Jews, uh, Judas uh, to, to the other Judas uh, he said, why do you uh, reveal yourself and not uh, to us and not to the world um, I have told you now before it happens so uh, that when it does happen with you you will believe it's not what he read out. So he uh, said that uh, I, I will be, uh, if you obey my words, and uh, we will uh, go with, with him. So whoever loves and keeps his words, the Father also loves him, and he will go to to him. And I wouldn't like to read out the whole story. This this whole story is about that, 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 that Jesus Christ promises the Holy Spirit, and he says that the Holy Spirit will come to you as well. In verse 14, uh, John 14, verse 14, Jesus says, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Amen. So listen, here in this part, uh, uh, all three members of the Trinity are mentions, uh, mentioned, the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit. And there's a promise that they will be with us forever. Uh, the Father will dwell with us, the, the Son is with us also, and there is a condition of that. Uh, which is, if you love me and you keep my commands. So if you love me and you obey my commands. Again, I would like to tell you that uh, hyper-grace theology became very, um, uh, very um, pop popular. Uh, you, you just put a, a big writing on your T-shirt, I love Jesus. But I would like to uh, emphasize that the love of Jesus is obeying, observing the commands of Jesus. Listen, here in, uh, in John chapter 14, Jesus says in verse 14, if you love me, keep my commands. And then he says in verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my, my father, and I too will love them and, I, and show myself to them. And the third uh, uh, example, uh, verse uh, says, uh, 14, 21, and 23 says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. So listen, Jesus uh, Christ made it clear three times that the Father loves not everyone, uh, but he only loves those who love the Son and who keep his commands. So you might pray that God help me, uh, that I wouldn't be caught when I break into someone's house. Uh, you might pray that God help me, that uh, people wouldn't recognize that I got uh, my, my diploma by cheating. You cannot pray for them. Uh, you might pray uh, that God help me, that I wouldn't be caught, that I 
why I go to prostitutes, because God, God will not uh, uh, help those uh, people. God is with those. He acts in the lives of those, and he brings about testimonies and, and miracles and wonders in the lives of those who love the Son and who keep his commands. And he repeats it three times. And one more thing, uh, that these are not just um, uh, meek requests. Uh, Jesus does not say that uh, those who accept my suggestion or who uh, react positively to my uh, ideas, but uh, he says, whoever keep my uh, commands. In uh, the 60s and 70s, uh, there was a hippie Jesus idea that uh, Jesus uh, was wondering about uh, uh, with, uh, <laughs> with, um, uh, with, uh, with with a uh, with a look uh, into the sky and, and so on. But the but the Bible does not give us this picture about Jesus. He says, "Do this and don't do that. Uh, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them and teach them." At other places, the Bible says that not don't not only teach them but give examples he calls the uh, attention that listen to the the teaching of the scribes but don't uh, don't do what they do because this is hypocrisy uh, Jesus says that do my commands these are clear things uh, already in, in, in Hungary people uh, were not uh, soldiers they were not in the ar army but uh, they the soldiers know that a command is not a suggestion not not an idea it's a, it's a it's a command and Jesus knows that we love him this is the witness that we love him not that on, on our Facebook uh, page we, we put a big heart uh, and writing about Jesus uh, on our profiles uh, but it's that we keep his words that we observe his commands again I say John chapter 14 verse uh, 15 says uh, 15 21 and 23 uh, these are the verses that say three three times that whoever loves me will keep my commands uh, whoever has my commands and keeps them uh, it, it also includes knowing his commands why should we teach people of all those words that Jesus said so that they would know his word and they would be able to keep them because this is the way how they can get in in love relationship with him all his words not only what we pick uh, from his words but all his words should be taught to people and we should make it clear that these words are commands jesus said about himself that i that he has done the commands of the father in his life and this is why he received such a name which is above every other name because uh, he was obedient to the commands of the father uh, until the end we can also uh, uh, walk together with god in his love and and uh, witnesses can surround us if we keep his word let me show you another part of scripture the uh, gospel of mark uh, is finished uh, with the uh, with these words uh, 16 uh, chapter 16 verse 20 uh, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and conferred, confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it so the gospel of Mark uh, says the same like John that uh, uh, Matthew that if we do his commands uh, Jesus commands if we do what he says then he is with us then he will he loves us because those who love him will keep his commands and whoever loves the, he, Jesus he also loves them and the father loves them and to them he sends the Holy Spirit and 
Let me show you two more verses in Romans chapter 8. Uh, these are verses next to each other. Uh, it, it gives us good hope concerning the future, and it gives you the reason why you shouldn't worry about the second wave of the of the uh, pandemic, uh, because uh, the Holy Spirit says through through the Apostle Paul in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that in all all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. If you have the Bible in front of you, let's read it together. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. So no matter what situation you might be in, uh, if you love God, then all things will work together for good. Uh, if you uh, know his commands and you keep them. And the last verse I would like to read out is in verse 31 and 32 in Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give, give us all things? So listen to these words. Words, uh, until the end of the word, the Lord is with us. And if he is with us, who can be against us? And he, if he gave his own son for us, uh, how much more uh, along with him graciously give us all things uh, to whom who, we who love him and who know his word and do accordingly, act accordingly. And it's important that we should go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them them and teaching them of all uh, things that uh, Jesus said. And we have to do that. We have to tell also those parts which are not uh, popular, uh, which do not reflect the the spirit of this age, but also that do not commit adultery, do not steal, um, etc. Et we have to say them uh, so that they would know uh, Jesus' commands and they could be obedient and they could enter into God, God's love. And in the book of Revelation, uh, it says that we shouldn't uh, fall out of the first love, and it's not about a, an emotion, but it's about obedience towards God. It's about uh, paying attention to God's commands and about uh, observing his commands. May the Lord bless you. I wish you further uh, great summer days and I wish that you would study uh, the word of God so that you would uh, know it, know them and you would uh, observe them. And please listen to Geza Tut and I believe that he will speak about how uh, we can uh, live a, a, a life that is more obedient to God. May God bless you. Good evening. I greet you with great respect in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thank you very much Peter Hock for uh, all these encouraging and inspiring words and message and I'd like to partly join this message and partly I'd like to continue that message uh, that I uh, started some weeks ago or maybe last week about changing because God has called us to change and with our repentance, with our new birth, and with our uh, in feeling with the Holy Spirit, this change hasn't didn't come to an end, but it has just started. And then, in the process of sanctification, or in uh, in the process of growing in faith, uh, this change uh, should be part of all our uh, weekdays. And one week ago, uh, I spoke about. Uh, the role of attention, what we pay attention to, uh, because whatever we listen to will change us and 
az meghatároz bennünket, az And therefore we have to uh, choose the object of our attention and we have to focus on the word of God and we have to put the greatest emphasis on the communion with the Holy Spirit in order that uh, attention would uh, strengthen us and the work of God could be developed in us and the work that has started in us could be completed and for this I'd like to join with another part then I spoke about that uh, what uh, what is the uh, role of what we uh, pay attention in life and now I'd like to continue what is the role uh, of how people listen to us and partly I would like to join to Peter what he said that concerning Christians uh, the word expects that Christians wouldn't convert people they wouldn't like to change the word because the God gospel the message of the gospel brings about stress in people uh, because the message of the gospel uh, faces the word that uh, it's not good in its condition, but it's acceptable uh, in the sight of God, and it has to change, and it brings about stress in people, because if you are reminded that you are a sinner, then uh, you get into contradiction about the, the picture concerning yourself, because everyone wants to create a positive picture about himself and it has its own psychology uh, how people can belittle their own weaknesses and they they use um, different names of, uh, about sins uh, they, they use the word uh, agricultural tool for the shawl uh, so people would want to uh, flee from their own acts but the gospel says that believe uh, uh, it says that whoever believes and is baptized is saved whoever does does not believe uh, uh, will be condemned and it, this brings about uh, stress in people but we know that God calls people and uh, and those who are visited uh, by the Lord accept the gospel with joy and they do not uh, uh, react to it stressfully and with anger when uh, they face their own uh, condition but uh, we have to accept that uh, fact that people react positively uh, to the message if the moments of their calling come into in their lives uh, the the time of their visitation come in their lives but afterwards they might react differently uh, if you think back uh, how you reacted in the time of your repentance this is why you could repent and if you uh, remember that uh, before that uh, some, or years or months before uh, how you reacted you you might know what I'm speaking about uh, so it's important that the time of visitation would come in in your life but uh, we cannot uh, define that therefore we have to preach the gospel in due uh, time uh, and when it's not due time uh, uh, and when people don't accept uh, the gospel with joy it's not due time but we know that the word of God is not in chains it's such a seed that has a power to survive and many times also with such people who uh, reject the gospel in time uh, uh, the seed falls into the, the cracks in their hearts and it can fall into the, their soil and you might also know such people or you yourself could be such people uh, who uh, heard the gospel for the first time you might have reacted um, with um, uh, with anger and some certain time has passed by and then the seed that you have heard at that time somehow in the field of your heart could remain and years or decades later uh, you were born again uh, indeed this is the most important task in our lives to preach the gospel to make people disciples and this is the greatest commandments and uh, no greater commandment left the mouth of Jesus Christ and 
Every other message that are in the finishing part of the Gospels are in line with that. Also in Mark's Gospel, the message is finished by Jesus Christ when he says that whoever believes and is baptized uh, will be saved and who does not believe in uh, will be condemned. And those who, who believe such signs will follow that uh, they will speak in tongues and, uh, and they pray for the sick and they will be healed, etc. And, uh, and also the word says that God has confirmed the word of God uh, by the hands of the disciples and signs and wonders happen through their ministry. But it, they happen because uh, the apostles didn't allow themselves to be influenced about uh, how they, they look at them, uh, how people look at them. Uh, they didn't allow themselves to be influenced by the uh, cynical uh, 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 views of, of people, uh, but they were free and they were thinking about themselves uh, according to what the Word of God says of, him, of them. And they, the, they identified themselves with how by how Jesus looked at them. And when Jesus said that uh, make disciples of all nations, and he made it, made it as a command, uh, he made it known uh, to the disciples that they you are suitable for that. You can do that. And uh, uh, Jesus uh, was very determined uh, with this message. There was no uh, fear. There was no uncertainty in the disciples and they didn't ask what should we do when when uh, we are left at or when we are rejected uh, because uh, uh, what Jesus said uh, made this uh, solid uh, determination that they are suitable to pre preach the gospel. This is what they are called for. The Apostle Paul also emphasizes this message, and he does so because uh, concerning this and also concerning the following of the Lord, but maybe mostly uh, concerning the preaching of the gospel, um, shame is brought about. And uh, this is what I would like to speak about, why there is shame and uncertainty in people, mostly because uh, from the word they receive such uh, reactions and feedbacks concerning their identity, their persons, or it's deeply embedded into their identities. Uh, uh, either from their childhood uh, and therefore they don't have that courage in their personality uh, that proactivity that courage in their personality uh, which that is needed uh, in order that they could carry out the task appointed by God and I'd like to give you some biblical examples how uh, the people of God uh, overcame those pictures about uh, 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 that came from the word and uh, they uh, uh, and a picture and uh, and a picture about uh, that that people gave them about themselves were in contradiction uh, they opposed the picture about uh, of God about them Jesus Christ knows our abilities and he does not exaggerate uh, I, I do not say that we have to assume such things about ourselves uh, which are not inside of us. Uh, but uh, many times uh, life teaches us uh, that uh, how you look at others, how people look at us has a great influence on our activity and uh, if you meet such reaction, uh, you might uh, be passive. You could uh, bring many examples from natural life, uh, what influence an external I has on your life. The Apostle Paul compares um, Christian lives with uh, uh, with sports, and I I, I know that uh, among them among you there are such ones who took part in in, in sports, professional sports, and you might know some other people, and and you might know people in the world. Uh, you could hear people giving uh, sportsmen giving interviews, and. Uh, 
in order that a sportsman become world champion, uh, Olympic champion, uh, an external eye is needed, a mentor is needed, a trainer is needed, uh, who can see what's inside of that person, and the good trainers, uh, good trainers can. Uh, can bring up the good um, abilities and skills where are the limitations of, of their skills um, because many times you just think that your uh, abilities are smaller that, uh, that, uh, than what exists in you and if, if you were alone then you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to step uh, from one to two uh, and to break through certain walls but thank God there are people around you and God takes care of that that there be such people around you who know uh, your inner uh, skills and who are aware of their boundaries and if you think that you are at the borderlines and someone on the outside might say no you are not at, at your uh, limitations go forward so all uh, world champion all um, olympic champion and sportsmen can thank his uh, success their success also to those uh, who look at them with faith and god engaged us uh, with faith this is what hope has said uh, to Israel, but it refers also to uh, the church that God looks at us with faith, and many times uh, God, uh, uh, people look at us uh, with with uh, faith, and this can uh, make make us step uh, beyond our limitations. For example, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, related to Timothy. Uh, let's uh, see that this uh, very important part uh, that uh, we generally read out concerning the preaching of the gospel. Uh, let's see the circumstances. Uh, now, I wouldn't only like to read about that we should stir up the spiritual gift in, in us, but uh, I'd like to, uh, the message of uh, Timothy uh, from verse 5, uh, Remembering uh, therefore I'd like to remind you to stir up the spiritual gift that is in you uh, by the laying on of my hands because uh, God has given us uh, give, has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love the spirit of sound mind, so do not be ashamed of his uh, testimony and me as his captive. Uh, amen. So do not be ashamed of um, the, the word of God or the spirit of God, but fight um, together. Now, look at, looking at the personality of Timothy, we see that there was a, an inconsistency and, and he sometimes uh, lost his um, confidence. And, but the Apostle Paul saw in him the faith of his grandmother, also the faith of his um, mother, who were all God-fearing women, and I'd like to call your attention to the fact that he expressed towards regarding Timothy that I'm convinced that this faith dwells in you, and this is why I'm encouraging you to stir up the gift of grace within you. So Timothy could thank Paul for uh, looking at him, seeing him in faith like this, and the same with the children whose parents see them in faith, or the young people who teachers or people around them uh, in positions of authority see them in faith and hope, because these have a great influence over the lives of people. But now I'd like to emphasize 
uh, give examples who uh, had a negative influence on people, but the people of God were able to overcome this. The first scripture regarding this is uh, Numbers 13. This applies to the children of Israel. Here I cannot say positive examples, but I'd like to, in verse 26, I'm reading the word of God, and it says, that now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back to word with them, to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them and said, we went to the land where you sent us and it truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell there in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Um, then Caleb quieted the people of Moses before Moses and said, let us go up once and take possession for we are able and overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Amen. So this account is one of the greatest tragedies in the, in the history of Israel. Many psalms also remember this, that they were there at the threshold of the promised land. For a long time they were wandering in the desert after they came out of Egypt. And when they were there at the gate, they were not able to enter. They sent 12 spies, as Jesus also sent the 12 disciples. But the disciples passed the test, but unfortunately, of the 12 spies, only two were good spies. And when they examined the land of Canaan, first they said very positive things. They said that it's a wonderful land, a desired land, it has wonderful fruit. So first they came with a very positive message, but then they called attention to the fact that there is a problem, that there are giants in the land there, Anak, the sons of Anak there, and uh, we cannot overcome them, we cannot overpower them, there's no way we can fight them and come out victorious to achieve any success. And in their eyes of the uh, people of Anak, we are like grasshoppers or locusts, and, and so we saw ourselves as well. So the key here in this scripture is how they thought about themselves, how they saw, looked upon themselves. Here it says that first in our own eyes we were like them and then in their eyes as well. So the children of Israel made the mistake that they didn't think about themselves and, and speak about themselves according to the word of God, what it says about them. But they considered the, how their environment looks at them and how the environment mirrors them. And, uh, it was only Joshua and Caleb who were clear about what God thought about them and how he saw them, that God brought them out of Egypt and this event that is happening now, that he, God will lead them into the land of Canaan. This is an event that is ordained by God. God doesn't do this because of the children of Israel, but because he has decided that he will take possession of this land and he will give it to the children of Israel. So he thought of the land, that that's his, Eretz is his, he's the one who chose it for himself, and Joshua and Caleb were convinced of this, and they said clearly that God is with us, and no doubt we'll be able to overcome the children of Anak, and we'll be take, able to take possession of the land. On a natural level, yes, it's true that there is no chance that we don't have experience as warriors for the last 
last 300 years, we were slaves in Egypt, we were oppressed, and we were uh, the, uh, we were uh, we were downtrodden, but if God is with us, He will be able to take us into this land. But the children of Israel looked at themselves through the eyes of the sons of Anak, and this prevented them from. Um, taking the lead and this is why the Apostle Paul says that if I want to please men I cannot be a servant of God often people when we witness and preach the gospel they project when they start witnessing speaking about the gospel they, they project other people's reactions whether they will be rejected or laughed at but if you look at this you will never open your mouth and you see the expensive price that the children of Israel had to pay that they didn't they did weren't able to enter the promised land and what great price they had to pay that they didn't look at themselves based on the word of God but they looked at themselves through the eyes of the enemy through the children of Anak and of course after they saw themselves in this way you could not expect the sons of the uh, 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 the Anakim to look at them in the same way and then this was projected to their environment and then your environment also reacts the way you react to yourself so psychi psychologists and other professionals call, call people atten attention to this that if you're full of an inferiority complex and you radiate this out of your personality this is what will be reflected from the people around you this starts a process and it will be easy, even more difficult for you to meet their requirements or to be able to fulfill the task that you were sent to send to do or that you're proposed to do this is why God says or the Apostle Paul said that God didn't give us the fear of um, the spirit of fear how was Timothy able to overcome fear or that he will be rejected when he will witness he took upon himself or became one with the the image that the Apostle Paul conveyed, that the Word of God says that our uh, ability comes from God, and He made us worthy in uh, par being partakers in the inheritance of the saints. So don't believe in yourself, but believe in the fact that Jesus Christ lives in you. We often believe and we say that Jesus is there in heaven and he was lifted up above all the principalities and powers and all the spiritual forces were subject to him that are in the high places and he has received a name that every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth and we pray to God and we see God before us in heaven glory to God and I said last time as well the letter to the Corinthians that it's the will of God the, the Holy Spirit project before us the glorious Christ and looking at him we're able to change and the Holy Spirit gives us information about what's happening in heaven the Son of God Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now he's sitting in glory and uh, out of his, this glorious state we're able to take power and our Lord is the Lord of the whole universe and this is the Lord who's with us not the historical Jesus not the culturally transmitted Jesus He's not a baby, he's not someone uh, who is crucified on a cross right now, but he's the, the Lord of glory. And this is the scripture that, he, that applies to him, that if God is for us, who can be against us? This you should know when you go and attack the enemy, just like David went against Goliath. David is a good positive example how David was able to overcome the image that was created uh, by the people around him. David was in a in a difficult situation. We know the story that Saul was rejected, spoke to Samuel, God spoke to Samuel that you should go to the house of Ishai, because I chose a king from among his sons from them. And the prophet Samuel went, and when he spoke to Ishai, he called all his children, and he made them line up, and the first son was Eliab. When Samuel looked at him, he saw his nature, he saw his height, he saw his charisma, he saw his charisma 
he saw his uh, outer appearance and abilities, he said, yes, this must be it, this is the anointed of the Lord. And the Lord immediately spoke to him saying, no, 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 don't look at what is it before the eyes, because that's not what God looks at. And he sees what is in the heart. And then the next one came, Shamma and the others. And then he went through all the sons, and all of them, the Lord spoke to him that this is not here, he's not here. And then Samuel asked, are all your sons here? No. Shai said, there's one more out with the chief. He's uh, taking care of them. You think uh, we can call him in as well? So Samuel said that we will not sit down until he comes here as well. And they sent for him. He came. And when Samuel saw him, he was um, um, probably shorter and he had a red face, and immediately the Lord spoke to him that, yes, he is the chosen one of the Lord. He should be anointed. And in front of the eyes of his brothers, he was anointed. The prophet Samuel was, uh, he anointed David as king, but his, his rule didn't start. But why did I uh, speak about this? This is shared with us in full detail in the book of Samuel. Samuel speaks about this in such detail because the Bible feels it's important that the circumstances which uh, come before the calling of certain people and the reactions, how how they reacted to their calling. The Bible lists this in detail, that we may learn of this and, and take uh, um, comfort if uh, you've had uh, a disadvantageous uh, past or family. This is not a problem for God. This uh, shows us very clearly that David was not the most important person in the family. He it was the person who always took everyone's shoes out. Uh, he had to do the dirty work. Well, not dirty work, but the, all the cleaning. And uh, the, he was um, sent to do the little menial jobs. And uh, this important thing happened with David. But in the eyes of Eliab, he remained the, the little guy, the little brother, who he couldn't accept. And he looked at him and uh, with, uh, wanted to make him feel inferior. And this is David. This must have had an influence in him. This must have impacted him, how he was treated in the family. He was always left there. He was a little bit neglected. And they didn't count with him. They didn't think much of, of him. So when his father sent him to send, uh, take food to his brothers, and he came into a situation where the Philistine, Goliath, started to uh, disparage and slander the people of God or the, the camp of Israel and he was threatening Israel and his soldiers and he was uh, slandering God and this is what David came into into this situation when he took the food and he was looking for his brothers and he was uh, um, he, he heard with his ears what was happening and they said to David that Saul will give a, a great reward to the person who will overcome Goliath and then David was curious he asked about and then he met Eliab, his brother, and listen here again, this gives us an uh, about his family and the circumstances in which he grew up. When he met Eliab, he says, Eliab heard his brother. This is um, 1 Samuel 17, 28. And he was very angry at Daniel, saying, why did you come here? Who will take care of the sheep that are out there in the wilderness? So uh, he, he was angry at David that even you're not even taking care of the sheep that you, you're so, um, you cannot be trusted. Uh, why do you come here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. So Eliab never forgot the moment that he had to stand uh, and wait for his 
brother to arrive and then in front of his eyes he was anointed as king of Israel and um, at the same time he saw that Samuel believed that he was the chosen one of God and um, he, had, he was full of malevolence, he was full of um, evil thoughts about his brother and in this situation David didn't lose heart. He didn't pity himself. He didn't feel sorry for himself. When I say that there are people who have um, disadvantages in family, in their past, they've had a hard life, people say that they, they were treated badly by their parents, but David didn't think of these things and he didn't that's not the way he looked at himself in the next moments we see that he attacked Goliath he uh, convinced Saul that he, he should go out and fight Goliath not in the clothes that he received and, and all the armor that he received from Saul but he took these stones from the river and he, he went against the giant and now how did Goliath look at him he also uh, despised him. So again, David found in a situation that he looked at a great warrior and he didn't see fear in the eyes of Goliath, but he looked, he saw the dis despising um, um, look in Goliath's eyes. Most people would have reacted like the ten spies when they saw the giants, because he was also a son of the son of an Anak. Uh, he was a hybrid being that is not completely human, of the Nephilim. He was like uh, the sons of Anak. So look at that, the difference. The ten spies looked at the Anakim, and when, he, when they saw the rejection of the, uh, in the eyes of the giants, they were full of fear. But when David looked at the giant and he saw this rejection in his eyes, it, it motivated him instead of filling him with fear. David grew up like this. He was used to this, that people don't think much of him, that they're cynical. He didn't allow this to enter into his heart. He, he knew that God called him. He knew that he's chosen. He knew that this is a historical moment in his life. This is why he was born. This is the first moment that gives a purpose to his life, that he had to go and face Goliath and he didn't allow this uh, look of contempt to influence him. He didn't want to please people because Paul says that if you want to please men, you cannot be a servant of God. What do people expect of you? When they look at you, they often communicate with their eyes that we love you until you want to convert us. If you, you, you're a very good person if you don't remind us of our sins, we think that you're a very good guy, a nice person, if you don't try to um, uh, make us go to your church or lure us into your church. We don't want to lure people, but we want to preach the gospel. But if you always want to please people, then you have this um, urge to be very cultured and very uh, nice to people and completely uh, uh, not try to force anything on anyone and uh, respect everyone's opinion. But David was not like this. He uh, wasn't intimidated by it how people reacted. Uh, but even regarding Eliab, he said, why, why are you speaking to me? and like this and he just turned away so you should turn away from these reactions these expressions these um, opinions that try to prevent you from doing the will of God for example preaching the gospel Peter also uh, spoke about Gideon's story he was um, working with the wheat and then Peter uh, 
and that the angel appeared to him and he says, God is with you, strong man. And then Gideon asked, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening to us? Why don't we see all the miracles? And then the angel said to him, go with this power of yours and, and uh, God will save you. And then Gideon said, how will I be able to save Israel? We are the poorest uh, family in Israel and I am the poorest one in my father's house. Uh, he lived in Manasseh and we saw the division of the land and he lived in the tribe, land of the tribe of Manasseh. He didn't meet others. He didn't meet the, those from Judah, from Benjamin, from other tribes. He met those uh, of Manasseh, but even if, of those in Manasseh, he was among the poor, poorest and he was the least in his father's house. This is in Judges 6, 15. So here again we see a young man and this is the natural reaction that he had when he received uh, an appointment from God. What he ex 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 received from others. He didn't receive respect from his family, from the uh, patriarch or the or the tribe or the nation, but they saw him as the smallest, as the least. This is part of his identity, but praise God, he allowed the word of God to come into his life. And then the Lord, the angel said to him, I will be with you and you will defeat the Midianites as one man. So even if you're the smallest one, even if you're the poorest one, even if you're the least in your father's house, still, I will be with you. And if I'll be with you, you'll be able to defeat the Midianites as one man. So it's simple sentences that God speaks to us often. And if you receive these simple sentences, this will completely change your whole life, your whole future. Simple um, statements like this are often rejected by people, but then God speaks to you again and again. And it's very important for us from these stories to learn to receive the word of God, that it may be the word of God which gives us an image of ourselves. And don't think of yourself as other people around you think of yourself or as you feel about it. For example, Zechariah and Mary in Luke 1, we read that first it was Zechariah who was visited by the Lord, then Mary was visited by the God. We the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah and said, you will have a child. And Zechariah said, how do I know this? What proof do I have? I'm an old man. So there was an issue with age, that it was difficult for him to receive the message of God because he was advanced in age. He says, my, he asked for a sign from God and he was mute. And then Mary, we read in the scripture that the angel appeared to her and said, angel, you we, we were, the Lord is with you. And he uh, shared the good news with her that he, she will give birth to a son. And then Mary didn't ask proof. She accepted that it will happen, but didn't know how, and just asked, how will it happen? Because I don't know a man. So she has received the word of God and didn't allow the outside circumstances um, determined the, this image of herself. What we read, what do we read about Jeremiah when he was called? He referred, to, he, he, he spoke uh, as an excuse of his age, that he's too young. At that time, young people were not taken seriously. Even in the time of patriarchs, Job, uh, when all the others spoke, only then did Elihu speak. It was very critical, but still he, wa he waited. It was a cultural thing until everyone else spoke, because young people were not taken seriously. Young people had to wait to their line. Jeremiah also said, I have to say all these messages from God. What will people say that I'm a young person and I'm prophesying things about Jerusalem which 
I have to say. So there, there was an issue of age that kept him, almost kept him, from, from uh, obeying the calling of God. In the same way the word speaks about Moses, that when the Lord visited him, he said that I cannot speak well and uh, uh, my the, the way I speak, the way I uh, I have I'm a man of um, a difficult speech, and then Moses. He was 80 years old, so he still had 40 years of ministry. Uh, but that's how he spoke about himself, because that's what people said to him, and that's what people. Uh, he lost all the abilities for 40 years that he had uh, 40 years previously in the court of Pharaoh in Egypt. He was in a leadership position in Egypt. He knew he was not able to preach the word of God, but he may have been uh, before that. And then Saul is another example, chosen by God to be a king, in spite of him ending his uh, um, career or ministry in a, in a negative way. But still, when he received his calling, he says, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, from the smallest tribe of Israel. And my nation, my family is the smallest one among the tribe of Benjamin. So I am from the smallest tribe, and even within the tribe, I am from the smallest family. So as he was uh, living in Benjamin, and uh, that's the image he had of himself, but that's not what Saul saw, in, uh, so God, God saw in Saul. But he saw in him the work that he wanted to accomplish, that he called him for. He saw all these abilities, and God also sees what something in you. He ha you have a calling. You should stick to this calling. This is why Paul says in the letter to Ephesians, he's praying for the believers that they may receive light and uh, receive a, a, a spirit of revelation and understanding that they may recognize their calling among the saints, what uh, their calling is, what the appointment of God is in their lives. Because when we were born again, we received a new nature, new ability and God wants us to use these abilities and bring them to the surface in our everyday lives and be good stewards of them. And the Lord is with you. As Peter said, if you use these abilities, if we walk in the will of God, if we love Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if we want to make the people into disciples and don't allow the influence of the world around us or the society in which we grew up, because most of these uh, examples that I listed come from the family situation, from your childhood, from your youth, and the limitations that people thought about themselves. So don't let these things influence us, but let us look at what God says about us. If he called us, and if he started this work, he will also complete this work in us. So look at yourself in faith, be like Gideon, that when the Lord said to him, he, he's with you, he is truly with you, and go with that power, authority that you've received, because you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ says that you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So this is the strength that you should take, receive, and go and preach the gospel, and the Lord will be with you. And don't look for excuses, but if there are excuses, look at these biblical examples, that these heroes of the faith were able to lay these ex excuses aside, and they were able to run the noble fight of faith, fight it, and get into... Uh, 
the finish line, get into the finish. I'd like to speak to those who have not yet received salvation. Maybe this is how you think of yourself as well, like Gideon or Jeremiah thought of himself. You're still looking for excuses when you hear the message of repentance, when people are calling you to Jesus Christ, you may feel that you're not worthy, you're not uh, uh, capable of doing it because you're a sinner and you think of all the actions that you think that this is uh, incompatible with God, that God doesn't want to deal with you, he rejected you, that he doesn't want to do it, have anything to do with you. Now this may be true partially that these actions are evil, but God overlooks this time of uh, ignorance and he is asking you to be reconciled to him and come to him as you are. This is There's a story in the Bible of the prodigal son and this makes it clear how God deals with sinful people when the prodigal son came back home, his clothes were smelling of the, the pigs that he was taking care of, but the father, when he saw him, he, he didn't say, first go and clean him up because I don't want to hug him like this, but no, he hugged him as he was, and then he said, go take these clothes off him and put on him nice clothes and put a ring on his finger, put a shoes on his feet because this my son was dead, but now he's raised to life. He was lost, but now he's found. So you're also like a child of God who was lost. He's like you're like a sheep that went astray and he's waiting for you as a good shepherd that if you were um, driven away from God and you fell into sin during this pandemic, but now you want to come back, don't let the devil fool you that you don't have any hope, you don't have any future, that God doesn't deal with you anymore. No, it's not true. The time of grace is still at hand. God is willing to forgive those who humble themselves before God. So don't lead, don't lead a life of uh, being um, driven and uh, um, going astray. It's not by chance that you're hearing the word of God now. This means that you want to settle your relationship with God. And the time is short. We see the signs of the times. Don't play with grace. Um, testing, trying to test God, seeing how far can you go. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart, but receive the word of God. So if you were swept away from God, or you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then please say the following prayer after me. My Heavenly Father, I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you love me so much that you sent your only Son for me that I may not die because of my sins, that I may not be lost, but have eternal life. And Lord, I admit that I am a sinner and I have sinned much against you. But today, with all my heart, I'm sorry for all my sins, and I turn away from them, and I turn to you. I ask you to forgive me, and I deny every connection that I had with Satan, with evil spirits, and I open my heart before you, and I ask you, Jesus, to come and dwell in my heart and give me eternal life. I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you rose from the dead and you're living today. I accept you as my personal savior, redeemer, healer, and my God. And from this day on, I will follow you and I'll serve you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you have received the Lord in your heart tonight, then I'd like to ask you to call us on the numbers that you see on the screen. And maybe if you call, there's an answering machine, I'm not sure, but when you call, make sure you leave your number. We'll definitely call you back and we'll give you help and assistance in, uh, in building the faith in your heart and becoming a, a disciple. Because as you heard, it's not only the will of God that people... Uh, 
exercise their faith, but that they become disciples. And for this, we need help from other people after repentance who have been walking in the path of faith for a long time and were able to give us good advice. May the Lord bless you.